Hey family, this is your brother, your uh, uncle, and uh, your grandfather, and in some cases, and friend. And I wanted to do this video, the purpose of this video is basically for historical purposes. So I wanna go straight to the point, I wanna waste a lot of time, I wanna deal with intricate details as far as to history. Now, I'm doing a, a, a book, and this is actually some a research I've done on my family. And so uh, basically what I'm doing is uh, I'm doing the first phase of, of my book is dealing with the life of my father, Bishop C.W. Cotton. Also, the book is entitled um, Living Faith. Right. And so so the book is basically going to deal a lot with with history. Right. So but in, in dealing with the book, I'm going to kind, kind of touch a little bit about the history of the family of how my father came on on the picture uh, into came into being, I should say. And so basically, so this is for you, uh, Terrell. Uh, this is on your paternal side, your father's side, your history. Uh, be on the lookout. I'm going to be doing, this is the first of many series of videos I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do videos on uh, other connections in other families, but primarily I want to start with my family as, as, a, as an opener. And, um, I think there's a lot of information historically that needs to go down on the record. And because when uh, I'm dead and going and others that are dead and going, older ones are dead and going, a lot of history will be lost because nobody's sharing it. So I'm going on the record to document a lot of history. So as I said, uh, it's going to be in a book form. And now this portion here is going to actually be in a um, uh, documentary form. And so if you're interested in me interviewing you about any of your history as far as to uh, a historic Kent County, and it don't necessarily have to be genealogy, but it could be about your 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 your, your uh, things that you have saw with your eyes from an early age and your uh, from a, from your early years, right? Because a lot of things have changed. You go in Chestertown, a lot of things that were there when we were little are not there now. So what I want to do is let me get straight to the point. Um, basically, uh, Dad, uh, Bishop Cotton, uh, his name was Clifton Warden Cotton, born in 1931, and uh, his father and his father and mother was uh, uh, Raymond Cotton Sr. was his father, right? And the mother was Mary Della Wicks. Now I'm gonna do a little more history on the Wicks side because the Cotton side is kind of a little gray because a lot of stuff has been hidden. I think there's some fudging of paperwork with the county because we had uh, uh, properties and stuff like that throughout Kent County that, uh, and they were waterfront properties that are in the prominent areas of Kent County. And so every time I'd go and dig further to get more information on the cotton side, I, 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 I run into a brick wall. But so I'm constantly finding more and more things on the cotton side. But I'm going to deal with the wick side first, and then I'll come back and show you, give you what I have come to, to learn in my research on the cotton side. So basically, um, on the wick side, my father... Uh, my father's mother's name was Mary Della Wicks, right? Okay. She grew up in Pomona. Okay. Now, little, just a little history here, real brief, not too detailed, but a little brief history. Uh, Pomona is actually in a, a territory in Kent County, which is called Quaker Neck, right? So that whole territory that's called Quaker Neck basically uh, includes Pomona, uh, a broad neck, uh, sandy bottom, uh, all the way up until you get to the Rock Hall uh, area, which turns into what they call Sharp Neck and uh, uh, Eastville and Rock Hall, that, that area there, but and fairly off on the, over on the uh, west end side of that county. But basically, primarily, um, the, the, the beginning part of the, the, the uh, blacks in Kent County basically began in that Cracker Neck territory. Now you also have other other portions of King County such as Steel Pine uh, and Comas, which is a portion of that on the other other tail end of that, uh, which they they classify that as as Kennedyville, right? But actually it's technically not Kennedyville. It's like when you look at the census, right, that area like Dutchtown, that's primarily where the cottons um, settle uh, later on, right? But pr prior to that, um, the Cottons was in Chestertown. But let me get back to the Wicks, okay? All right, so Mary Della Wicks was, her father was Charles Wicks, Charles and Angela Wicks, okay? 
Now, I'm going to do a little bit on the the uh, the father's side, the paternal side, and then I'm going to do a little bit on the maternal side and kind of try to bring tie some knots together. Okay, so now on the Wix side, you have Mary Della Wix, which is my father's mother, right? Her father was Charles Wix, right? Charles, I think it was Charles W. Charles Wardell, I think it was Charles Wardell Wicks. That I think is where my father get the name Clifton Warden, right? Wardell Warden. Okay. All right. Now going back, Charles Wicks, right? Uh, father and mother. His father was Sherman Wicks, right? And and Sherman, and I'm going to go all the way back as far as I can go back on the paternal side, and then I'll deal with the maternal side on the Wicks side. Okay. All right. Now, but. Let's stay let's stick with the father's side with Charles Wicks. So Charles Wicks' father's name was Sherman Wicks, and his mother name was Addie Wicks. Addie was a Hodges, right? So Hodges, uh, now going back to the next generation, Sherman Wicks' father's name was Charles Wicks, right? Charles Wicks, this is the first Charles Wicks, not the Charles Wicks that was the father of, of Mary Della, but Charles' grandfather's name was Charles. So my great grandfather Charles Wicks, his father's name was Sherman, and his his father's father, or Charles Wicks, his grandfather's name was Charles, right? So Charles Wicks, the first Charles Wicks, was a farmer. Uh, you can find it on the 1880 census. He worked with uh, a man by the name of Thomas Hodges, right? So Thomas Hodges had a daughter named Addie, right? Thomas Hodges was a farmer. He owned farmland. I, I believe uh, if you go all the way back in his history, I haven't gotten further that far back, but uh, with Thomas Hodges, Thomas Hodges owned, he was a farmland owner. He had a farm. He grew, uh, he had livestock and he had uh, a vegetation. He actually had a thriving, booming farming business, right? Now, so when Charles Wicks the first, Sherman's father met um, Thomas Hodges and they became a union, right? Or became a, 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 I should say, they formed a covenant wherein Charles Wicks' son Sherman took the, the daughter of Thomas Hodges to be his wife. And so there you have Sherman and, and Addie Hodges who gives birth to Charles Wicks the second, which is uh, the, the father of Mary Della Wicks. Now I said a whole lot, but that's a whole lot of history and a lot of research I've been doing for the past 25 years. Okay. Now, so going back, Charles, uh, Charles, the first son was Sherman who married Addie Wicks. We got that part straight. Now going back further in that line, Charles Wicks, the first was a free man, right? And now on the census, all of them were listed as mulattoes, right? Now, whether it was on the maternal side or the paternal side, I haven't kind of, I haven't quite got to that point yet. I found some things that look kind of clear and concrete, but I, I want to be factual. So I don't, I don't want to give you what I don't know. Okay. All right. So basically, so Charles Wicks, uh, on the census, right? And also on the death certificate, which is what I have, right? On the death certificate of Sherman Wicks, right? Um, his father was listed as Charles Wicks, right? His mother was listed as Amanda Wally, right? So now the first Charles Wicks, the first was married to Anna Wally. Right now, the Wallies are related to us. Uh, if you follow the Wally line down, you will find uh, a, a man by the name of Kenneth Wally. Right. So these are cousins to us. Right. They're cousins to us on the side of the Wick side way back. And I think Charles, this Charles was born like around 1835, I think or so. OK. Uh, and don't quote me exactly because I think he was born around 1835. I'll give you all the intricate details in another, another presentation. So, uh, that's as far back as I can go on the Wicks side, Charles Wicks, the first, and then, uh, Anna Wally, and then his son Sherman and Addie Hodges, and then his son, uh, Charles and Angela 
or sometimes they say Angelo. I think it's Angela. I think it was a typographical error. Angela, it says on the death certificate, Angela uh, Wicks. Okay, now, now that we've covered that part, we know all of the, the sons and daughters, uh, there was only one son in, in that union between Charles Wicks and uh, Mary uh, Angela Johnson. She was a Johnson, okay? So we have Charles, uh, we have a uh, 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 Walter Wicks, right? And then we have um, the, 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 the the daughters, right? Uh, we have um, Mary, Mary Della, which was the first, she was my grandmother. Then you have, um, now I may not get them in the right sequence as far as the ages. I have to go back and look at my paper because this is where I have to look at it, okay? But we have um, Grace, Grace Wicks, who was who was married to uh, Percy Elwood Johnson. She was Grace Wicks Johnson, right? Then we have uh, Adela, Ardella, uh, Adela. <laughs> uh, we say we we've come to call her Ardell and Ardell, but there's no R in her name. It's Adele, right? You have Mary Della, which is my grandmother, which is uh, 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 Dad's Cotton's uh, Clifton Cotton's mother, Mary Della, and then you have Adele, Adele Wicks, who married a Cotton. This is uh, Emerson Cotton's mother, right? Mary, uh, uh, Adela Cotton, Adela Wicks Cotton is Emerson Cotton, and all on that side, Emerson, his brothers and sisters, okay? Uh, which is uh, uh, Elizabeth, one of the sisters, Emerson, um, I'm drawing the blank now because I got to look at the paperwork, but um, um, you get the you get the picture. We'll, we'll give you the intricate details, but uh, those are two I can I can I can right off the top of my head. Um, uh, but I don't want to want to get off in that. So please forgive me if I left left out the, the names of, of Emerson's brothers and sisters. But um, so uh, then you have. Um, um, Adela, uh, uh, you have Della, Mary Della, you have Grace, you have Adele, right? Then you have uh, Ruth, right? You have Ruth Wicks Johnson, right? Then you have uh, Ruth Wicks Johnson, you have Harriet, right? Harriet Andrews, right? Um, uh, I think it was Harriet Andrews, right? Then you have um, Dorothy, Aunt Dot, right? And then you have Carol, Carolyn, Aunt Carolyn, right? And then you have um, uh, Aunt Alice, right? Now, I think I got them all covered, and, and, and I don't think I left one out, but if I did, please forgive me, okay? But uh, so there you have the sisters, and then you have one son, which is Walter, right? And we have relatives um, that are offsprings of Uncle Walter, okay? Now, so on the Wix side, that's pretty much all I know. Uh, from this particular stage of my research, okay, I, I'm digging, digging. I'm I'm constantly reading newspapers and looking at articles and things of that nature, right? Now, one thing I did leave out was on the maternal side of Sherman and Addie. Addie's father was Thomas Hodges, who was a Civil War. He was uh, he was in the uh, the colored troops that fought in the Civil War, right? So he was a uh, 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 a Civil War soldier, right? And I think that may be part of that military because if you follow uh, down uh, in the Wicks line, you see that uh, a lot of the men were military uh, person uh, persons in the military. Like like Dad was a uh, um, a sergeant in the army, and uh, Uncle Randolph was, I believe, he was a sergeant <coughs> in the army. So that military. Uh, uh, experience was passed down the genes uh, from um, mother side, mother Addie Hodges side from her father's side. Okay. Now, so I covered a lot on that. Now going back down. Okay. Let's just go down the Wicks side. So um, we covered Wally, the first Charles, we covered Hodges, the first uh, mother Addie, and we covered, uh, now we're going to cover a Angela. Angela was a Johnson, right? So she came from uh, her father. Her mother was Harriet uh, Johnson, but uh, incidentally, her mother, uh, great, 
great grandmother, which is Mary Della Wicks's, I mean, break it down to you. Clifton Warden Cotton's mother, Mary Della Cotton's mother, <laughs> which is Angela Wicks Johnson, right? Her mother was Harriet Smith, right? So now we, re we are related to Smiths in Kent County through the great, our great grandmother, Mary Angela Wicks' mother, who was Harriet Smith, right? Now, our great grandmother, Mary Angela Wicks Johnson's father was Thomas Johnson, right? So Thomas Johnson also came from a family of landowners and farmers. They own a lot of land and farm farmland in Kent County in the Quaker Neck territory, uh, namely, Sandy Bottom and um, uh, Pomona and um, Broadneck, et cetera, right? In that territory. That today is a rich territory where a lot of rich people have moved in and taken over the land, okay? How did they get it? That's a good question. Um, so we have a history, brothers and sisters, uh, nieces and nephews of business entrepreneurs, people who actually run business. So much so that even down to our father, um, dad, Bishop Cotton, Clifton Warden, had, um, um, he had a business where he um, sold cars <laughs> on the side, right? He had a primary business where he installed septic systems. When I was a boy, I used to go with him, right? He would install septic systems. He also had a business where he would clean them out. He had a tank. So he had a backhoe, he had a dump truck, and he had a tanker, right? This That's how he provided and raised a family. And then additionally, he started, and when he went into the ministry in the 50s, right, he, um, he got, um, started in, in the military. He was in the military and the army, he left out of the army, went into, uh, went to school for business, um, because apparently he had ideas he wanted to run his own business. And so he, uh, took courses in business and received a social degree in, uh, I think it was, um, um, was it Bailey's, um, Bailey school or something like that? Ferris school, no Bailey school. Ferris Prison, no, Be Belly, was it Ferris School? One of them, we'll get it together. But I have all that written down, it's gonna be in the book. Um, and so then he went from there to get into law enforcement where he was a correctional officer at Homsburg, Hom Homsboro Prison in Philadelphia. And then he went from there to, he moved to Newcastle, Delaware and was was a uh, became a deputy sheriff in Newcastle County, Delaware. And then he came back to Maryland in the 50s uh, and when he started the church, uh, and the people he started with was primarily his family, the Wicks family. Now, I want to say this here. So basically, so on the so on the 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 Wicks side, the Wicks the Wicks were people that actually owned land and were business um, minded people, were independent entrepreneurs. So that's where a lot of like individual thinking comes from, from our from our gene, from our genetic uh, uh, bring, uh, bring up or upbringing. Okay. So, uh, let's see, what else can I say about that? Okay, um, what else can I give you about the family? Um, like I said, uh, Quaker Neck, Quaker Neck Landing Road, uh, Broad Neck Road, uh, Sandy Bottom Road. Sandy Bottom Road is, I uh, want to share this here. Also, they had a church there, and um, the church is not there anymore on Sandy Bottom Road, and it, that's what they call that community. Anything on that street, that strip of Sandy Bottom, they call that Sandy Bottom Road. So they had a church there. And as a result of them being successful businessmen uh, run, running farms, many of them were buried in that in, in a cemetery that they that they had, which was attached to the farmland, which is owned now by um, some corporation. But all that all that farmland that's owned by the corporation was actually owned by the Hodges and the Wixes. Okay? So we've lost it. How how did we lose it? Was it so I have yet to get to down to the bottom of that, but I have my my ideas of what I think happened to it. But um, somehow, though, they got it right. So um, did they flush the paperwork? 
Eh, they probably did. So we'll find it. We'll get down to the bottom of that. Uh, we're looking at historical records, land records, and things of that nature, so we can kind of see what happened in the exchanging of the lands and how the lands, uh, they lost the lands. But anyway, so they started a church there uh, in uh, Sandy Bottom, or Sandy Bottom Road. It was a Methodist church, and uh, as a result of the, that booming, striving community, they started a church there. Um, and then, and the, the generation after that uh, started a church on uh, on Pomona Road. Right? Uh, is it Pomona Road? I think it's Pomona Road. I think it's, is it Pomona Road or is it Broad Neck Road? I think it's Broad Neck Road, a correct correction. Broad Neck Road. And that was a church called Hathaway. Hathaway, it was a, a Hathaway Cemetery. They put their name up. The man named Hathaway. He was a, a white man named Hathaway, I believe, it was. And so they had a church there. And so the next generation, which was the the sons of uh, Charles, right? Uh, Sherman's uh, Sherman and Addie and Charles and and Anna. They all went. They all went to the church in. Sandy Bottom, but in the later years, they formed the church um, in, uh, I'm not sure who actually formed the church there, but there was a church formed there in um, Pomona, uh, in uh, Broadneck, I should say, on Broadneck Road. And that's where um, Charles Wicks II and Angela Wicks Johnson, they all went to church there on a broad neck road. Okay, so that's all the history I know as far as to the Wicks side, and uh, on that note. Now, I did mention something. I want to kind of, kind of uh, reiterate a little bit, and I'm going to. Have, I'm doing some interviews currently now, talking to different different family members, and uh, or different people that uh, lived during those uh, time that are still alive today that lived during that time, and uh, basically, um, um, Dad started the church. Uh, it was a church across the street. Um, I, I was given the person's name. It was an old man. It came from Baltimore, and he was having meeting in, in uh, a building there. But when he died, uh, my dad had just came back in from the military, and um, that's where he started meeting there. And they got together uh, with the family members, uh, the Wixes, and... Um, and Mother Lorraine Waters was one of the people that um, um, she was friends to the Wicks family. Okay, and so they all got together. It was that it was the Wickses and and um, Mother Lorraine Waters? They were the original people to start the church there at um, Calvin and Lynchburg Street with, with my dad as the pastor. Okay, now I'm gonna go a little further detail in the book. <clears throat> with how my dad started it and uh, who he was licensed and so forth under and all that is going to be covered in the book. But uh, he didn't incorporate the church under his name, but he used another charter, uh, which but it doesn't take away the fact that he was the one that that actually the visionary and the one that actually started that. And as a result of him, uh, many of the Pentecostal churches in the area uh, became a big thing. A lot of the Methodist churches, um, they were not as open to Pentecostalism because they were basically Methodist churches. So when when um, Dad came back to Chestertown, he brought that Pentecostal uh, uh, holiness movement into the Kent County area. So any church, uh, I should say, ninety percent of the churches in Kent County and the surrounding areas came into fruition as a result of uh, Clifton Warden C.W. Cotton, right? Uh, you go to Delaware and Kent County, Delaware, a lot of people that are there are products of, of my dad evangelizing them and they came under my dad's ministry and separated and went into their own ministry. And prayerfully, I'll have an opportunity to interview some of those people at a later time, okay? Now, on the cotton side, which is the more complicated side of the the genealogy, is um, that Bishop C. W. Cotton, Clifton Warden Cotton. His father's name was Randolph Cotton. Right now, I covered the mother's side, so let's look at the father's side a little bit. 
uh, uh, Raymond Randolph Cotton Sr., right? And he basically um, was from Chestertown, right? Slash Quaker Neck, because a lot of people, but on more on the, I would say the eastern side of Quaker Neck, not Pomona and, and um, Broad Neck, Sandy Bottom, but more on the eastern side, which is by the water. Okay, most of, and when I say eastern side, I'm talking about Chestertown primarily by what, the, what they call the Chestertown Armory, that whole strip, um, Cannon Street and High Street, right? Uh, High Street and Calvert Street, okay? And uh, there's a street on the side of, uh, Pro I think it's Prospect Street. All of that, all around that is where, um, but primarily uh, he grew up, right? And, and on the death certificate of, of one of the progenitors, which, which I'll get to, let me just kind of slow, slow down a little bit because I'm giving you a whole lot of information, right? So uh, Raymond Cotton, Senior's father's name was John Cotton, right? Okay, now I'm gonna deal a little bit with John Cotton and then I'll deal a little bit with his mother's side, right? But so I'm gonna deal with the John Cotton, the father's side. So John Cotton, right? The John Cotton, not John Cotton, my brother, but the original John Cotton, the father of Raymond Cotton, right? Was a um, business type man, right? Because they, were in partnership with the Joneses, right? And there's a man, um, I can't remember his name, but that'll be in the book, I'm sure it will be in the book. Uh, he was instrumental in buying properties and selling the properties to the, the, the black people, right? The colors, as they call us back then, so that we can have land ownership and have businesses so we can uh, live and survive. So the, on the other side of the tree, the family tree, they were into, into agriculture, but on this side, they were more into the business aspect of starting. That's where you have, they started stores like the, um, uh, the, 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 the um, barbershop, right? Um, the Commodore's um, TV repair shop and um, different uh, stores that different people had. The Munson's had a store. The Hoxter's had stores. Um, the Cotton's uh, had real estate and they rented. They inherited or they got land on Cannon Street down by the water. So a lot of that was real estate that they owned that they sold to other people, okay? So now, John Cotton, right? Um, I'm kind of gray going back beyond that, but I, I believe his father, okay? I believe John Cotton's father's name was John Cotton. I have to kind of get tie that together. But in my research, this is what I, I found, right? In my research, I found another John Cotton who lived in 108 Cannon Street, right? And his uh, his daughter name was Mary, right? So he had a, so we had now another Mary. There's a bunch of Mary Cottons floating up in his gene, in his genealogy, but this was another Mary Cotton who was uh, the, the the daughter of John Cotton, the first John Cotton. You had two, like I said, two John Cottons in that rotation. But John the, the first had a daughter named Mary who married a man by the name of Houghton, Jonas Houghton. And Jonas Houghton uh, had uh, a band and they were very notorious for traveling. That's where you get the music thing from, right? So now on the Cotton side, we got the music thing going because on the Cotton side, uh, of the, 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 the tree, uh, it was musical background. So that's where we get the music from. We got the business and the music from both sides, right? So on the, on the cotton side, what I've come to discover, as I said, is that John had a daughter named Mary. And so they had a band. And I believe this is where the John, our father, Raymond Cotton's father, got his musical 
uh, trained from and they play jazz music, right? Because as I recall, as a little boy, uh, Raymond Cotton had a piano in his house when I went to Baltimore and he played the piano. And I also know that uh, he was a lay speaker or what you want to call a preacher, right? So that's where a dad and um, uh, Uncle Randolph, Raymond Cotton Jr., got the preaching from from Father Raymond Cotton, from, from the father, I should say, Raymond Cotton Sr., who got it from his father, John, who was also a, 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 um, a minister and a, uh, yes, he was a minister. Uh, I, I read somewhere, uh, somewhere in my crossings and passing a lay speaker. Um, cause it was a lot of that going on because they actually had a church there, uh, in, um, on the Quaker next side, uh, near, I think it's church lane now, but they had an older church there, which is where they went. So our people came up in church, brothers and sisters, make no mistakes about it. They came up in church. So the music thing was on the cot came from on the cotton side of the, of the spectrum. Um, so John, like I said, his father's name was John and I'm, I'm kind of digging a little further on the maternal side because it's kind of great. Because like I said, uh, I, I went to the county records and found out that in the county records that there was a lot of property that belonged to the Cottons that it became um, a property that had been taken over by the state and the county eventually. Okay, so that's how that property had, had that's that's how that property got lost through uh, state. Uh, and I'm doing some research because. I think there is a statute of limitations, but in the state, usually you can go in the state and find out if you have any inheritance. And I've never done that in Maryland to see if actually there is an inheritance there in, in this state of the cottons. But I believe it is because, like I said, you can go look at the probate records. You can go into the archives of Maryland State Archives and look at uh, land records and look at probate records and find that there was people that were cottons that had land that were probate records that was deeded or either uh, sold in auctions, right? Okay, so that's what I have there. Now, um, I touched briefly on the other side. So, Pop Cotton, let me kind of put it where the ghost can get it, as the saying goes. Uh, Raymond Cotton Sr.'s father was John Cotton. Got that part? Okay. John Cotton was uh, a son of another John Cotton who uh, had a daughter named Mary. Houghton, okay, got that part. Who was John Cotton's wife? John Cotton's wife, Raymond Cotton Sr.'s father's wife was Mary Jones, right? Cotton, remember I said how the Joneses had businesses, they had owned land, they were into real estate and, and they started uh, stores and things that we need to survive, right? Uh, mechanic shops and different things of that nature, which is history that they left out on purpose because we didn't carry it. <coughs> we we didn't um, preserve it and carry it forward. So, um, Mary Jones came from the family of Joneses who, like I said, owned land, who uh, purchased uh, uh, property. That's where you get that church, James, uh, James United Methodist Church, okay? That was there uh, through uh, a land deed that I believe was, I, I, I don't want to get the name wrong, but it was one of the Joneses that actually, um, um, was on the board to formulate that. I read that in the, in the history of James United Methodist church, right? So, uh, grandpa Raymond Cotton's mother was Mary Jones, who was in the Jones area. You know how they had a saying, everybody's trying to keep up with the Joneses, right? So she was a Jones, right? Now, a little something on the side note here. My dad had a good friend named Jones. He used to play the piano. I, I never really knew. And if you know that family and you see this video, uh, give me his first name. I'm trying to understand to get his first name because I want to research him because I believe he was in that family of Joneses, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So the Joneses basically were 
uh, became wealthy people through land ownership, just like the, the Wickses and the Johnsons and the Hodges, right? So Mary Jones, like I said, uh, I believe her father was Charles Jones, okay? Charles Jones. Now, her mother, uh, I think, I, I, I don't quote me exactly, but I got to look at my paperwork, but I believe, um, I believe that Mary Jones' mother's name is Mary as well, Mary Jones. She married John Cotton and became Mary Cotton Jones, right? Now, in that Mary, uh, what do we, what do we didn't, a lot we didn't know, uh, Mary, and John had children. Uh, Mary had some children without John, and John had some children without Mary. <laughs> Go figure it out, right? Okay, so which uh, gave us other other relatives in our family, such as I'll give it to you on the mother's side. Uh, Mary Jones um, had um, a daughter named Maggie or Margaret cotton right which incidentally guess where she grew up at 108 Cannon Street 108 Cannon Street okay so she grew up on 108 Cannon Street now the Wicks I, let me am I correct or am I incorrect I think it was 106 106 but anyway the Cottons and the Wicks lived next door to each other because Charles Charles Wicks died in 10 was it 108 Cannon Street? I think it was 108 Cannon Street, and the Cottons lived in 106 Cannon Street because Maggie Cotton or Margaret Cotton, when she died, guess where she lived at? Before she went into, uh, she died I think in a senior home in in uh, Seaford, uh, Delaware, 106 Cannon Street, right? So her father, John Cotton, uh, lived in 106 um, Cannon Street, right? Uh, so that Mary Houghton and the other John, the original John, lived in 106 Cannon Street, okay? Now, I saw that also on her death certificate. Um, so going forward, um, so we have Mary Jones, Randolph Raymond Cotton Sr.'s mother, Father Charles Jones, mother's name was Mary Jones. They were business owners. They were real strict. I mean, serious type people. So when you see that serious side of you, that's where that serious side came from, that Jones side, right? Okay. Uh, cotton side was more. So that's where a lot of that militant come from. The cotton side were business, but they wouldn't, they, they was, they didn't play. They were serious. But they also, uh, lack of a better way to express it, kind of gangster style type businessmen. <laughs> if you want to give it a label, and, I, and this is just this is just a generic label, a black mafia type businessmen. They didn't play. They didn't play. They will. They you owe them money, you will pay your money, right? That's how they were, right? And that's where a lot of that anger come from. I see a lot of that in my character. Uh, I'm cut through. I, I, I get mad. And I, I, I remember dad, when I was coming up, dad had a temper that he used to, <laughs> he would grab a hold of that temper. Boy, someone make him mad. You see him, he start, his, his voice get high. He start going back and forth. That's that cotton blood, right? That gangster style hurt you, right? Uh, I'm, I have someone I'm going to interview, and um, he, he actually used to drive the car uh, I sh he shared with me. He used to drive the car. He's a relative of ours uh, on the Cotton side uh, um, um, by way of the, the, the John Cotton, the first John Cotton through that uh, rotation. And I'm going to interview him. But uh, he said he used to drive them. Uh, they would go and to some club and I think it was Ken Islands, I think. And, and uh, he, he was the driver and they used to go down there and they didn't play. Okay, this is what he shared. I'm gonna let him give his testimony. But anyway, so I got that side, uh, the Joan, Mary, Cot Mary, Mary Cotton was a Jones and she came from that rotation of the Jones family. Her mother was Mary Joan. Now, that's as far as I got because there's so much to cover, but I just wanted to share this. So please save this video. 
download it. If you don't know how to download it, uh, you know, reach out to me and I will show you how, but you need to download this video to get this history and, and save it on your hard drive, upload it on your, uh, YouTube page or whatever, or put it somewhere where it will be documented for history for years to come because a hundred years from now, 200 years from now, um, your sons, your grandsons, great, great grandsons, great, great granddaughters may see this video and they'll learn something from this video about the history of their families. The Cotton slash Wick slash Hodges slash Johnson slash Smith slash Wally, etc. All that. That's all our family. Right. And everybody else in between came out of that. We have Kenars, we have Cans, we have uh, Scots, we have. Low maxes, we have uh, 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 um, other other people that came out as a result of that. We have Munson's, the Munson's came uh, on the, the, the Matt, uh, Margaret Munson. We've had an interview with uh, her, her grandson, uh, Jimmy Munson, who tells us that uh, on his side. Then we also have uh, the Chisholm's, who was also a son, uh, a, a daughter, of of um, Mary Jones Cotton had a daughter named Mary by a man named John Wright, and so she was Mary Wright, but she was a, a Mary Jones Wright, not Cotton, but a, a Wright on the mother's side, and so therefore we have the relationship with the Chisholms there. Okay, there are other sons and daughters that I have not yet to connect yet, but I do know that there was a George Cotton. And I don't believe it's the George Cotton that uh, is from Rock Hall. It's another George Cotton. I did find a George Cotton that was in the military as well, that lived in Aberdeen. Uh, there was a Louise Cotton, right? Which was another of, of Raymond Cotton Sr.'s sisters, Louise Cotton. And there was also a William Cotton, right? So these are other family members that I have yet to, uh, and that I say George, George Louise, and um, um, George, Louise, and William. Those are the three. George, Louise, and William, the three that I haven't been able to connect to the family, but they're off to somewhere. And at some point in time, as I continue to research, I'm going to find them and I'm going to bring them to you as I get them right. So that's all I have uh, on the history of the family. So I want you to download this video, uh, save it on your computer, your hard external hard drive and share this with the family because uh, this is very important for you to know where you came from. And I'm grateful that I was able to find the things that I did find at this point and I'm still researching as I said, and the more I get, the more I share with the family. So get this downloaded, watch it over and over again, watch it over and over again, because the more you watch it, the more you're gonna understand and learn your family, right? And then it'll make a lot of sense as to who you are as a person. So that's all I got. And uh, um, we'll talk a little soon. Uh, we'll talk again soon. All right.